Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 3.1. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. Actually, in this video, I'm using version 3.1.2 because I'm a little late getting this video out. Also, in this video, I'm not going to be using Photo AI as a standalone application. Instead, I'm going to use it as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. The only reason why I'm doing that is it's easier for me to AB the results from within Lightroom. We're going to be working on two different images. One is this image, and this, if I hit I a couple times, you'll notice is a JPEG. We're also going to work on this Nikon RAW file. Now, the reason why I'm working on two different images is there's a slight difference uh, between working on a raw file and working on a non-raw file, and I want to just show you that slight difference. We're going to start out with this JPEG. You'll notice it was shot with an Nikon Z7 II with an ISO of 2800. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's a considerable amount of noise. Now, no editing has been done on this JPEG at all. I'm just going to send it directly from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI. And by the way, I have an entire course on Photo AI. It's called Mastering Topaz Labs Photo AI. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video along with a discount code. Now, to get this image into Photo AI, the way I like to do it is I like to go up to File, then down to Plugin Extras, then all the way down to the bottom is to Process with Topaz Photo AI. The reason why I prefer to do it this way is if this were a RAW file, it would preserve my RAW format throughout my workflow in most instances, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. But this JPEG, it really doesn't matter as much because when I choose this option, it's going to ask me, do I want to edit a copy of this JPEG or overwrite this existing JPEG? I always want to edit a copy. So I'm going to click there. So it's going to create a JPEG copy and send it into Photo AI. Now, most of the new things that they've added to this version of Photo AI are under the hood. Uh, first of all, the preview rendering supposedly is faster. That's something you're just going to have to experience for yourself. Also, they've optimized masking. So if you do use masking, like you're sharpening the subject and you're masking just for the subject, supposedly that is improved. They've also improved the preserved text functionality and the face recovery functionality. So again, that's nothing new. It's always been in Photo AI. They've just improved what is already there. There is, though, something that is new. It is something that has been here, but they've changed the way it works. It's autopilot. Those of you familiar with Photo AI probably know that when you opened an image up into it, it would go through this autopilot routine and determine what that image needs. If it needs noise reduction, it would apply it right away. If it needs to be sharpened, bam, it would apply it right away. Well, it still does the autopilot, but it doesn't apply anything. So you'll notice on the right-hand side where it has enhancement, there's nothing there. Then at the bottom, it says, here are some suggestions to get you started. You'll notice it has denoise, and it has sharpen, and it has adjust lighting. There is a difference here. You'll notice that denoise and sharpen at the far right, they each have a little green dot. That little green dot means autopilot suggests you add those. You'll notice adjust all lighting. There's no green dot there. That's just a suggestion. And the re how it kind of figures out like what it wants to suggest. If you hover here over how do we make suggestions, you'll notice it says suggestions are generated using autopilot image analysis, your editing history, and our recommendation engine. So uh, it's examine the image like it always does, determine what the image needs. So that's what autopilot part of it. Then it has a recommendation em uh, engine. I would assume that's just from history, what other people did. But the important part in my mind is it's your own editing history. So if you often do, let's say, adjust the lighting or balance the color, or you often enlarge the image or resize the image or do anything like that, uh, those will show up down here as suggestions for you to use. Now, as far as the autopilot is concerned, the only autopilot suggestions are the two green dots. So if I click apply recommendations, that's all that's going to happen. It's going to denoise the image and it's going to sharpen the image. It will not automatically adjust all lighting. So just be aware of that. It's only the green dot stuff when I click there. Now, if for some reason 
you want autopilot to operate like it used to, where it just automatically will, in this case, denoise the image and sharpen the image, go up to Photo AI Preferences. On a Mac, it is under the Topaz Photo AI menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And you go to Preferences, go to the Autopilot tab right here, or selection right here, and you notice there's a toggle switch to automatically apply the filters. If you have this on, it will operate like it used to operate. Now, right now, nothing has been done to this image. I need to apply the recommendations. So I'll do that. Apply the recommendations, and you'll see that it's applying to noise and it's sharpening the subject. You'll notice in the lower left-hand corner is the progress bar. This is supposedly one of the things they've improved is the rendering is faster. Um, in some instances, I think it has been faster. In other instances, I think it's about the same. I think it really depends what you're doing and what it is doing. But in this case, you can see it's still taken quite a while, in my opinion. And my iMac is pretty powerful, but it is what it is. So you just have to wait for it. And I'm not going to fuss with it too much here. Nothing really has changed as far as with the specific denoise models and the sharpen models. That's all the same. Nothing new. Nothing really improved. They did improve the masking, though. They optimized it, whatever that means. But they've done improvements to masking. Uh, one thing I want to make note of, uh, in the past, if I wanted to get a before, I could click directly on the image to get a before. It doesn't do that anymore. What you need to do to get the before is click on the little eyeball. So there's before and there's after. You do have the different views. You do have the side-by-side -side view. You can see with the before and after there. And then you have this split screen view where you could grab this like middle slider thing and move this to get a before after as well. Um, but I like that single view there. So for the sake of this image, let's just say we're done. I'm not going to, as I mentioned, I'm not going to fuss with any of the settings in Denoise. I'm not going to change the AI model or change the strength or anything like that. I'm not going to do anything different with Sharpen. Let's just export this to Lightroom Classic. And you'll notice because it was a JPEG, it's saving it as a JPEG. Um, so that's just the way that works. I do want to show you, though, specifically with that RAW file, what is different, slightly different when you send a RAW file into Photo AI, and it doesn't matter if you're using Photo AI as a standalone application on a RAW file, or if you're using Photo AI as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. It will always it will do this one thing slightly differently uh, than uh, any other file type, including a JPEG. Okay, so now it's open here. I'm just going to give you a look here once it actually loads the image, and I'll hit the I key here so I know which one I'm doing. This is the original JPEG. And this is the new and improved JPEG. And let's um, go up to view and lock the zoom position. Oops, view and lock the zoom position. There we go. All right. And here is our new and improved JPEG. And here is the original JPEG. So here's the original JPEG. And you can see that it's not as sharp around um, Fredo's eye. And it's got a lot of noise in the background there. And here is the image from Photo AI. You can see that it improved it tremendously. So it really did a great job on this image. Now, let's go to the RAW file. And for this RAW file, I did do some editing in Lightroom. Um, I went to the Basic tab and I moved four sliders, highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. And I did lens corrections. And that's all I did to it. You'll also notice in the Detail tab, I have sharpening all the way down and I have luminance and color noise reduction all the way down. I want Photo AI to handle all of that. So I'm ready to send this into Photo AI. And again, the way I like to do it is go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and then again, all the way down to the bottom process for Photo AI. Doing it this way is if, especially you're working on a RAW file, it's going to preserve that RAW format throughout your workflow in most instances, and I'm going to explain in a moment. So we're going to open this up into Photo AI. Now it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to run Autopilot, but it's not going to apply everything. You'll notice with the raw file, it applied raw denoise. For raw files, it will always apply raw denoise. Always. Regardless of what autopilot thinks. So it's always going to put raw denoise on the image. That is the difference between a raw file and any other file type in Photo AI. In the lower right, you'll notice it's on this image. Do I want to upscale it? There's no green dot there. So that's not an autopilot recommendation. Sharpen is an autopilot recommendation, and you'll notice adjust all lighting is 
a recommendation, but it's not an autopilot recommendation because, again, there's not a green dot there. But what I want to call to your attention, that little eye that is next to adjust all lighting, if I hover over that eye, you'll notice that it says raw images will be converted to TIFF when exporting with this enhancement. So remember I said if you use that way to send the image from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI, that in most instance, instances it will prefer, preserve the raw format throughout your workflow. This is one of the instances where, where it will not. Is if you adjust all lighting and there's another option, uh, balance color. So if you balance color or adjust all lighting, it will not preserve the raw format. Instead, it's going to become a TIFF file. I'm not going to do it to this image but I am going to apply the recommendation. So I'm going to apply the sharpen to the subject. It's asking me, do I want to apply it? Yes, I do. So you can see it's up here. Then you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner that it is rendering. You can see that status bar there. I'll let it do its thing. You'll also notice, remember those adjustments, those edits I did in Lightroom Classic? Those didn't get carried over here. So this is the raw file. So what I recommend you do is if you are going to use Photo AI and you're using Photo AI as a Lightroom Classic plugin, just do it right away. Don't do any edits in Lightroom Classic because I may have to come in and re-edit it once I get back in there because what's going to happen is when I'm done here, it's going to plop those edits I did do on top of this image. So especially if you adjust lighting or balance color here, you may find that when you applies your edits again on top of it, it it's going to be something you're going to have to go in and re-edit. So just send the unedited raw file here right from the beginning, get this done, then do your editing in Lightroom if you're using this as a Lightroom plugin. Now I am going to fuss a little bit here because with sharpen, you'll notice subject, I'll hover over the word subject. You can see it, it masks the subject fine, but it's over sharpened. You can see the cheek of the bird is a little too sharp. I think this wing is too sharp. So I'm going to open this up by just clicking on it. And you'll notice that strength has the green dot by it in the autopilot setting with 77. You'll notice minor denoise doesn't have a green dot. Autopilot doesn't move minor denoise at all. Autopilot will just choose the AI model it thinks it needs and it will move certain sliders. Uh, these um, AI models might have different sliders. But in this case, for standard, it moved the strength slider to 77. I'm just going to take that off that and move it down quite a bit. I recommend that you under sharpen here because if you're using it as a Lightroom plugin, because once you're back in Lightroom, I could, I could, if it's not sharp enough, I could sharpen it in Lightroom on top of it. So use Photo AI to correct any sharpening issues. So if you have a blurry subject because of movement, or if you didn't nail focus quite right, um, Lightroom won't be able to fix those issues, but Photo AI will be able to fix those issues. So fix those issues. In this case, I didn't really have any movement. I focused okay on the bird. It just, after it removed all that noise, it just needed to um, to be sharpened a little bit. So that's fine. I don't think that's a big deal. I think it looks pretty good. Now, a couple things I noticed. I'm just going to click this little X. Clicking this little X will not remove sharpen. It just closes down that window. A couple things I noticed it's not doing it at the moment. Every now and then, if I come in and I fuss with something over here, like I move things around, all of a sudden I'll see like there's noise here that wasn't there a second ago. And I'll, 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 where'd that noise come from? Don't automatically go to either raw denoise or regular denoise and start removing noise or choosing a different AI model because that is just something that is rendered wrong with the preview. That's what I found. What I found is if you just kind of zoom in or zoom out, and then let it re-render, then it fixes it, and that noise is gone. Or you don't even have to do that. If you just save it and go back to Lightroom, you'll notice it saves it perfectly. That noise that all of a sudden appeared there won't be there. The other thing I noticed is that sometimes when you get the image, I'm not sure it's going to do it this time, when we're done in Photo AI and we're back in Lightroom, it's going to apply some Lightroom edits that you didn't do. Uh, let's just see if it does it. Let's export to Lightroom Classic. Specifically, Sometimes I found it adds Lightroom sharpening automatically. And I think that has something to do with the DNG file uh, that was returned. But we'll see if it does it here. I'm not sure. All right. This is the original Nikon RAW file here. And let's zoom in like right there. All right. So there's the original Nikon RAW file. And here is our new and improved file. And you'll notice the detail tab. Look at that. It added sharpening. I did not have sharpening done to the original file. Remember this original file? detail. Everything was at zero. 
You'll notice basic. All I did was move four sliders and I did lens corrections. So if I go now to the new and improved file, you can see it's a lot sharper. Uh, it moved those four sliders and it did lens corrections. It carried those over, plopped those edits on top of this image. But it also, for some reason, added this sharpening. You'll notice it's over sharpened a little bit. So I'm going to take that down all the way down. If I find the need that I need to sharpen the subject again in Lightroom, what I would do is I would go to masking and I would just mask for the subject. Once I do that, you can see it's found the subject fine, is I could go to detail and put sharpness up. And if maybe, sometimes I do this, I'll go to effects and I'll turn texture up a little bit too. But you can see that that is fine. And if we close this down now and I zoom in, so this is the after. Here's the before. You can see there's a considerable amount of noise. I think this was like ISO 800. So there's a lot of noise there. And you can see that Photo AI did a great job. Cleaned up the noise beautifully. And it's got it nice and sharp. Look at kind of the little bits of dirt or whatever that are on the chickadee's face. This chickadee was actually um, digging a hole in this like rotted log. And I interrupted its digging. <laughs> and that's why it has kind of this you know, plus things on its, on its head because it was digging that hole. So that's it. That's the new and improved photo AI, uh, version 3.1 and up. Um, again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. I have that entire course on photo AI, uh, check it out and I'll have a discount code there as well. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.